Okay then, so now we're going to shift the focus over to asynchronous code in Dart. Specifically, we'll be looking at futures as well as async and await. So, first of all, what are futures? Well, futures in Dart are like promises in JavaScript. They represent the result of an asynchronous task that takes some time to complete, like making a network request to fetch some data. And they can have two different states, these futures. An uncompleted state, which the future will have from the moment the request was made, essentially, up until a response comes back. And then also a completed state in which the future gets resolved or completed into either the response value or an error if something went wrong. So again, very much like how a promise kind of works in JavaScript. So let's try seeing how a future works in practice now and also how it works alongside async and await. What I'd like to do is create a function, first of all, called fetch post, which in a real project would probably make a network request to fetch some data from an API or something. But in our case, we're just going to simulate a network request for now by causing a small delay and then returning some kind of post object. So then to make a delay, the first thing we need is to create a duration object. And we can do that in Dart by using the duration class. So I'm going to make a constant called delay and I'm going to set that equal to duration. And then inside parentheses, we can pass in a named argument called seconds. And we can set that to be however many seconds we want our duration to be. I'm going to set it to be three seconds. All right, so we have a duration value now, which we'll need in a moment. Next up, we actually need to create some kind of delay in the code, something a bit like a set timeout in JavaScript. And to do that in Dart, we can use a function called delayed, which is accessible on the future class. So we can say return, then future.delayed, and then invoke that function. Now, as a first argument, we need to pass in a duration object to say how long we want to delay for. And we've already got that one here, so we can just pass that in as the first argument. And then as the second argument, we need to pass a callback function which runs after this three second duration. So in essence, we're delaying the execution of this function by three seconds. And this is how I'm trying to simulate that delay we'd get from a network request. All right. So inside this function, I want to return a value which represents a post or something. Now, I've already prepped a class called post to define a post object, which I'm going to paste in right here. So we can see that it has a title and the user ID property, nothing special. And now we can make a new post inside this callback function and return it. So that we're basically mocking the response from a network request to an API endpoint that returns a post, right? So let's return a post then and give it a title of something like my post or something better. And also a user ID. I'm just going to say that's one, two, three. All right. So now after this three second delay, we're running this callback function, which returns this post object. So when we call this fetch post function, there's going to be that three second delay. Then it should return that post object. Now, because we're not returning an actual value right away from this function, and instead we're essentially returning this future, this delay, and then a value, we can mark this function's return type as a future. And a future, remember, represents the result of an asynchronous action, something that takes some time. So for three seconds, this future will be uncompleted. But then after three seconds, it will complete and resolve into some value. Now that value will be of type post. So we can specify that after the future in angle brackets. So now what we're saying is, look, when you invoke this function, you're going to get back a future as a return value, which at some point should resolve into a post object. And although we're not actually performing a typical asynchronous task, like making a network request, we still have something that mimics that effect by causing a delay and then returning a value. OK, cool. So that's the function created. Now let's try invoking it. All right, then. So up here in the main function, what I'm going to do is just say fetch post like so. And remember, this returns a future, which is much like a promise in JavaScript. Now, when we return a promise in JavaScript, we get access to the then method right here, which takes in a callback function inside here that's going to fire when this completes. And it's exactly the same in Dart. When we return a future, we can tack on a then method to fire a callback function, which I'm going to pass in here, which fires when this future completes. And we have that post 
available. So right here, I'm just going to pass in this argument P. And if we click on this P, we can see it's of type post. Dart knows that because we said when this future completes, the data type it's going to resolve to is going to be a post. And that's what we get right here. So we fire this function. When it's been completed, it fires the callback inside the then method right here. And we can do something with the post. All I'm going to do is print the post.title and also I'll print the post.user ID property. All right, so let's try running this. So once this is not grayed out, it's going to be a three second delay. Then we should see something over here on the console. And we do my post and one, two, three. So this works. So that's using the then method, but we can also use async and await with functions like this, which return a future. So async and await is much like async and await in JavaScript. What I'm going to do is get rid of this first of all. And instead I'm going to call this again, fetch post like so. And this time I want to assign the result of this to a variable. So I could say final post is equal to fetch post. Now at the minute, we're going to assign this straight away to this variable. And that means that post is going to be a future. So if I click on this, we can see future post, right? Now I don't want it to be a future. I just want it to be the result that we get when the future completes, which is this post. So in order to do that, I can say, I want you to do this, but wait right here until the future completes and we have the post before assigning a value to this va uh, final variable. So to do that, I can say a wait. And that now waits until this is complete and then assigns the value that it completes to, to this variable right here. Now there's a problem. We can't use a wait unless we mark the function that it's in as async. And we do that by saying async after the function name and parentheses, but before the curly braces right here. So now this is absolutely fine. And again, pretty much identical to how we'd use this in JavaScript. So if we want to use a wait inside a function, we have to mark that function as async. But now this is not going to be a future anymore. It's going to be the actual post because we wait right here for the future to complete. And then when it does complete, the value it completes to is stored inside this final variable. So let's now try printing this out to the console again. I'm going to say print post title and then print post and notice when I say dot, we get access to all these different things available on a post object. So user ID, I'm going to run this. It should do exactly the same thing. In fact, I'll clear this first, we'll run it, but then there should be a three second delay. And then we should see these two things in the console, my post and one, two, three. Awesome. So there we go, my friends. That's how we use futures inside Dart and how we also use async and await with functions that return futures. In the next lesson, we're going to look at how we can actually fetch data instead of doing all of this delay stuff.